This research looks at different ways of using deformations for browsing volumetric data. All of our techniques make use of the layers that might exist in a dataset. For example, this volume has been segmented into skin, bone, and other layers. Before we show you our techniques with volumetric data, we'd like to consider some of the ways in which abstract layers can be manipulated in general. Exploded view. Pulling out an individual layer. Flipping over layers like dominoes. Leafing through layers like pages of a book. Fanning open layers like cards. Compressing upper layers to reveal lower layers. And peeling back layers. Here we have some volumetric data. I can pop up a radial menu and select the hinge spreader tool. This is a tool that cuts into the volume and pushes voxels to the side. As you can see, when I plunge the hinge into the data, none of the voxels are actually being removed. They're just being displaced. There are various 3D widgets attached to this tool that can be used to rotate the hinge or translate the hinge. I can also grab this widget and change the angle of the hinge. Right now, all layers of the data are selected so that the hinge cuts through all of them. However, if I make a flick gesture to the left, I unselect the innermost layer, and I can repeat this a couple of times to end up with a situation where the hinge is only cutting through the layers outside the skull. This is somewhat like an intelligent scalpel that knows to cut through skin, but to stop at bone. Now, if I push this hinge spreader all the way through the head, I end up with an exploded view of the head. Let's switch now to high res mode to get a nicer rendering of that. So that's the hinge spreader tool. Let's switch back to low res mode and select the next tool, which is the sphere expander. Flick gestures to the right, select all layers again. Now the sphere expander pushes voxels away from the center of a sphere. We can use this to create a dent in the face, for example. We can also push the center of the sphere into the head and increase the radius of the sphere to get an inflated looking head. If I perform the flick gesture to the left again, I unselect the inner layers. Now the outer layers have been inflated so much that we see through the voxels of them and see the skull on the inside. Another interesting thing we can do with this is place the center of the sphere right on the face of the skull. And now we have a situation where the tool has created a hole or a window in the outer layers and we can see the skull on the inside surrounded by the skin. Here it is in high res. We can see a little bit of the inside of the skin. That's the sphere expander tool. The next tool is the box spreader. This quadrilateral is the base of a box that extends upward. We can make this box very thin and then push it into the volume. Let's select all layers again. What this box does is it evacuates all the voxels within it by pushing them to the side. This is yet another way of cutting into the volume and pushing open the voxels that are exposed. We can make the box wider and see how it pushes voxels to the side. If we unselect the inner layers, they animate back into place. So we can, for example, use this tool to lift the outer tissue off the skull. Next, I'll select the leafer tool. This tool is shaped like a tray. It has a base and rectangles on either side of it. It also has these arc-shaped widgets, which can be used to hinge open each half of the tray. The voxels that are hinged open are rotated around the top edges of the sides of the tray. And we can change the depth of the tray using this arrow at the back. We can also unselect layers, in which case they animate back into place, reselect layers, and this is somewhat like leafing through the pages of a book, which is how this tool got its name. Next, I'll reposition the leafer so it's hinging open the top of the head. As before, 
we can leaf through the layers. Now, if you imagine this group of voxels made up of many layers, somewhat like a deck of cards, we can fan open the layers, and now there's a series of new widgets that have appeared attached to each layer. These can be used to pull out an individual layer to look at it. They can also be used to flip over layers. As you can see, during flipping, the layers push on their neighbors somewhat like how dominoes would. Let's switch to high resolution now. Next, I'll select the Peeler tool. This tool is again shaped like a tray. I'll position the tool so that the left half of the tray encompasses the brow of the head. We see a series of arrows. Each one is attached to a different layer. I can grab the innermost layer and peel it open, and we see all the other layers follow with it. If I put the innermost layer back, the other layers stay where they were. If I grab the outermost layer and peel it back, the other layers follow. I can also peel each layer to a different degree. Let's now see this in high resolution. Unselecting layers causes them to animate back into place. Changing the depth of the tray changes how tightly the layers are peeled. We also have a variation on the peeler called the radial peeler. This tool is shaped like a cylinder. It has the effect of poking a hole through the axis of the cylinder and peeling the layers away from the center, almost as if the layers were being turned inside out. Once again, let's switch to high resolution mode. 